everybody and welcome to another video on the long dark in survival mode. Today I'm going to be going through some more tips for you. Uh, so these are not necessarily for beginners, they're just general more tips that I had in mind that I have kind of gathered together as I've been playing this game over quite a long time. So yeah, I hope these are helpful as well and I hope you learned something Gonna from it and yeah, soon. enjoy! A good way to keep meat in the game for a longer period of time is to literally just store it on the snow. This can be done with raw or cooked meat. For example, if you've just killed a bear or a moose or anything with a larger amount of meat on it and you've harvested quite a lot and you want to keep it for a longer time, just store it in the snow and the condition will de uh, decrease a lot slower than if you put it into um, a drawer or cupboard or something like that inside. The snow obviously acts kind of like a refrigerator and you don't have to <laughs> put it all neatly into rows as you see me doing here. <laughs> Once you've reached uh, level 5 in the cooking skill, you will actually be able to eat pretty much anything without the risk of food poisoning or intestinal parasites, etc. Um, this is There is an exception that raw meat or fish may still cause um, food poisoning, but pretty much you can eat ruined food. While playing the game you may have noticed uh, that birds can sometimes be found circling around like this and this is always over a dead body or a carcass. So this will always indicate to you that there is something dead where they are circling. As well it's also a very good place to find uh, feathers which you can use to make arrows because they drop their feathers as they're circling the carcass or dead body. Surveying will fill up your stamina bar. If you're trying to get somewhere quite quickly and you want to just keep having your stamina up, what you can do is run the full way of your stamina, then survey uh, using charcoal so that you reveal some of the map, and then after that your stamina will be full again. So instead of waiting for your stamina bar to fill up, which is quite slow, you can just survey, which is handy anyway, since you're gonna need to reveal your map to yourself uh, as you go along and explore. If you need to get somewhere in a bit of a hurry, or you're impatient, <laughs> that's a good way to just get your stamina up again quickly by doing something useful in between. Watch out a bit for your temperature, because if it is cold and you survey, your temperature might decrease quite a lot, and sometimes it can even warm you up and do the opposite so yeah just keeping that that in mind so as you survive in survival mode you will be likely to collect quite a lot of items of course this also depends on the difficulty level but generally if you're doing pretty well for yourself um, you're gonna have a lot of different items that you can't carry around with you all the time so a great thing to do is to keep notes uh, so in your journal there's an area where you can keep notes and this I find really handy to do because then I can write down what I have where, uh, because by this point, especially after, the longer you spend surviving, you're going to forget where you've left stuff, what you have where, uh, and all that kind of stuff. So this is just a nice, easy way to kind of remind yourself what you have, where it is on the maps, or in, in which regions, and all that kind of stuff. So if you do ever think, oh hey, I need that item, or I need some more clothing, or I need some more food, or I, oh yeah, I need to repair stuff with skins, and so so it's just a really chill way to kind of <laughs> remember where you've left all your stuff. <laughs> Why I like to always have a pry bar on me. So you probably know that the pry bar can be used to open uh, either uh, car trunks that are locked or lockers uh, which are locked. So which you will need a pry bar to open otherwise you won't be able to access. But the other thing that I find really helpful to use a pry bar for is actually when you're fishing. When you go fishing, you're going to have to break open the ice in order to get access to the fishing hole. When you do this, you're going to be uh, asked to choose a tool to do so with. The tools that I use most commonly are the hunting knife and the hatchet. These are the two that I always will have in my inventory, and as well, the pry bar. When you break the ice to go uh, fishing, it does reduce the condition of your tool slightly. So instead of using my two most important tools, I use the pry bar instead. The pry bar isn't used for that many actions or tasks in the game, so therefore the condition of a pry bar reduces pretty slowly. It may seem like just a very small benefit, but instead of um, reducing the condition of my two most important items, why not use the pry bar when it does the job just as well and it just saves a little bit of the condition of your other items, which means a bit less fixing and they last a bit longer. 
And another little thing that you may have not realized that you can do is you can actually use escape to stop yourself from drinking or eating food. So if you are drinking water or you are eating, for example, an MRE packet and you don't want to finish it all in one go or you only want to fill up your bar a certain amount, you can actually press escape and this will stop your the progress. It seems like a pretty logical thing and maybe a bit obvious, but to be honest, initially when I started playing this game, is I didn't realize you could do that. And it's been very helpful because sometimes I don't want to use up all my water or all my food in one go. The bow is actually a really important uh, weapon to kind of get used to and to grow your skills in. With the lower difficulties such as Voyager or uh, Pilgrim, you're going to have access to obviously the two types of gun, the handgun and the rifle. But later on in the higher difficulties, you won't, uh, won't have these available, so your bow will pretty much be your main weapon. So it's actually a good thing to practice and get used to using the bow and to increase your skill in it um, when you are playing the lower difficulties or just in general. Even when I do have guns available, I try to use my bow as much as possible. A good way to start practicing and to pr improve your skill in the bow skill is actually to just use it on stuff like rabbits. For example, instead of throwing rocks at them, for example, you can use your bow and that will slowly increase your skill as well. Obviously, you can use it on bigger things like deer and wolf and even uh, moose, which I have done recently, which was kind of fun, actually. Um, so yeah, it's definitely a good way to just kind of build up that skill and get practice with it so that if you do decide to play the more difficult modes, you have a bit you're a bit more familiar already with the bow itself as you won't have access to guns. There are some items that you can heat up next to your fire instead of on the actual cooking slots. The items that you can do this with are the various drinks such as the tea, coffee and the medical drinks like rose hips and as well you can do it with canned foods as you see here for example the peaches. This is just useful because obviously for example with an actual campfire you only have two cooking slots otherwise so if you're cooking some meat and you want to heat up a drink at the same time then you can do it in this way. This does also work inside uh, for example near a stove. Just don't forget to um, pick up your item in time and not let it burn. <laughs> this tip is quite a kind of, I guess, more general tip, but I would say just remember to enjoy the exploration of the game. So when you're in survival mode, obviously you're going to probably eventually, if you're surviving well, get to see all the regions in the game that you like. and. You know what, you don't always have to um, fully loot a whole region uh, before you move on to another one. You can move freely between regions, especially once you get a bit more familiar with the maps and familiar with what regions transition to which. You know, you're going to come back to regions, you're going to go to other regions. For example, in Bleak Inlet and in Blackrock, you have the machinery available to craft bullets, for example, and to repair your uh, tools. So you might come here back and forth for from time to time if you need to create some more ammo or whatever. Um, so yeah, there's definitely going to be reasons for you to kind of travel between the regions more than once and uh, especially another reason could also be that you have left, you know, various uh, items and, and uh, skins for example in other regions. So. And don't forget that survival mode obviously is endless <laughs> pretty much unless you die of course um, so you know if you are doing pretty well and uh, you're having a really good run you know you're gonna have plenty of time <laughs> to explore all the regions you like and revisit them so i would say just remember to enjoy the exploration of the game so that was all the tips that I have for this video. I really hope that these are helpful in some way and that you've maybe learned something from them. I really appreciate all those who are watching my videos and if you ever have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments. Thanks so much guys and thanks for watching. See you in the next one.